AI reads your mind? You're probably thinking to yourself, Chris, you are crazy. You're absolutely crazy if you think I'm going to let AI read my mind. Well, really? Wouldn't it be easier if AI could just read your mind? So on our sister publication, AIDaily.us, AIDaily.us, where we put out breaking news in AI, curated by humans, but read by AI, there was a company called, what's it called, D-Wave, which has been able to figure out how to slap electrodes on somebody's head and read those brain waves and actually turn those into communication, or turn those into text. Now, outside of the amazing uses for somebody who has issues reading or writing or speaking, the ability to take your brain waves and turn it into actual text, something that people can understand, is if you ask me, amazing. So it's absolutely essential for those people who can't do that. I mean, look at somebody like Stephen Hawking, right? Somebody who cannot do that can turn their brain waves. Can you imagine how many people out there who are trapped in their skulls and just simply cannot communicate with the rest of the world? How, how amazing that would be for them. But at the same time, let's look at how that, what that power could do for us. And you're probably thinking to yourself, oh my God, I would not want that to happen. <laughs> my internal private thoughts are my own. But what if the AI could differentiate between the commands that you give it and your thoughts? What if it could actually understand that there are certain things that are things that you want to communicate and other things that you don't necessarily want to communicate, but you're just thinking within yourself? But even so, even that might be super powerful. Because think about this. There was a story that I read, a science fiction novel by Samuel L. Delaney. It was, I forget exactly when I read it, but it was called Stars in My Pocket Like Grains of Sand. And in this book, he talks about something called general information, or GI. I guess it was a riff on GE. But basically the way it worked is that in this universe, when you were born, they implanted something in your head. And this implant was a direct connection to AIs that were orbiting around the planet. And the moment you thought of a question, no matter what that question was, no matter what it was, the answer to that question popped into your head. It's just like in the Matrix. Remember when Trinity asked Tank to pilot a helicopter and he just sort of jacked it into her brain and all of a sudden she knew how to pilot a helicopter? It was just like this. It's the concept is that you would never need to learn anything because the moment a question popped into your head, the answer would follow it. So every single time that you needed to know something, you just knew it. It became your knowledge. Now, we have solved half of that conversation. We have been able to create a tool that can read our minds, that when we postulate a question in our heads, that question can be communicated. And can you imagine if an AI could take that question, formulate an answer to it, and then pop that answer back into your head? And some of you might think that's the absolute worst thing. And why would that be the absolute worst thing? Why would it be horrible for us to become all-knowing, all-seeing, omniscient. Because if you think about it, that's kind of what we do now, except we use this as the interface. What we do is we go, hmm, I wonder what the answer to the question is. Oh, that's the answer. All this is doing is eliminating that little roundabout where we put the question into a machine, the machine goes and finds the answer and then brings it back with, a horse, of course, a bunch of ads all around it. But wouldn't it be amazing if we just had that mind to AI interface that could just answer those questions for us? And of course it would revolutionize everything. It would revolutionize everything. Can you imagine what would happen for job interviews? Can you imagine what would happen for education situations? Can you imagine what would happen in any situations where people need to think on their own? The answers would just pop into their heads the moment they had the questions. 
I think that's super powerful, and that's such a huge evolutionary step for the human race that I think this is amazing. Now, some of you might say, no, no, that's horrible. That's horrible. What if they push fake news into your brain? Who decides what gets put into your brain? How do we know that something is a fact? What if it's misinformation? And we have no way to get around it. Well, this is a problem that we're going to have. This is a problem that we have today. We need to figure out how to do this right. But saying that something like being able to read your mind and actually push things back into your brain, I think that's an amazing thing. The content of what goes into that, that's a completely different story. And that is definitely something we need to build. I've talked about this before with my thousand truths concept. Because we're having issues figuring out what's true. We don't really know what's true anymore. We've lost touch with reality. And we need to figure out some way of being able to figure out what is real and what is not real, what is factual and what is not factual. And we still have to figure that out. I'm not saying that we can't. There's ways of doing it. But we are behind the curve when it comes to figuring out how to differentiate between truth and lies. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future. Mm -hmm.